Good evening. Welcome to Healing for Today broadcast. This is Apostle Potters here live in Gainesville, Georgia. So happy to be in your home's business teaching the Word of God. Those of you that are watching us by Android, iPhone, any other type of technology, we thank God for you. We believe God that God's going to do some powerful things as it relates to healing. I've said it before in these broadcasts, I believe that God has placed an anointing on my life in these last days to give a greater revelation to the healing power of God. It is the will of God for you and I to live a long, healthy life, and we all can do that in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And one of the things I want to say, thank you so much for all that you're doing here uh, at Clint Potter's ministry, uh, which is Healing for Today, uh, which is an outreach of that. We appreciate you so much for all that you're doing, and God is doing some wonderful things through that particular avenue. Today, we're going to get into the Word of God and bring some things out. Uh, healing, which I think is very needful. Uh, there's a lot of people, unfortunately, are dying before their time. It is the will of God that we have a long, healthy, prosperous life. And so the Bible talks about things that we have to do in order to live long. And so today I want to talk about uh, taking the Word of God as medicine. If you've ever been to your doctor before and you went in for a particular illness or whatever the case may be, and all of a sudden they find out that there's something that needs to be corrected or healed in your body, the doctor will then go ahead and prescribe a prescription for you. That particular prescription is designed for you to go to your pharmacist and, uh, and also actually what I call give uh, a information to that pharmacist so they can give you a prescription so that you can go and actually get the medicine that you need. And so that's very, very important. And so once you take that, get that prescription, you have your medicine. And then on that bottle, it says take this medicine two or three times a day. And as you do that, you'll begin to see your body gets well. Well, I tell people, just like people are so religiously and so strict in doing that, what they should do that. It should follow, of course, the advice of their particular doctor that they are. But we need to take that same mindset as we do the Word of God. If we will take the Word of God like we take our prescription medicine, we will see a greater manifestation of divine healing. And so today, I want to use and teach on take the Word of God as a medicine. Proverbs 4, is where we're going to tonight because I think this is going to be very, very important of uh, what we're trying to do concerning the Word of God. Proverbs 4, verse 21 says, Do not let them depart out of sight. He says, Keep them within your heart. Verse 22 says, For they are light to those who find them and help to one's flesh. So once again, Proverbs 4, verse 21 talks about, he says, let not the word of God depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Verse 22 says, for they are life. What is life? The word of God. For they are like to those who find them and heal them and help to your what? Flesh. So we understand that the word of God is like medicine. If you take the Word of God on a consistent basis in your life, it will provide the healing power of God to every organ, every tissue, every blood cell that's in your body. And so one of the things we have to realize is this. The Bible talks about in St. John 10, chapter, verse 10. He says, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have what? Life and have it more abundantly. So when we look at St. John, the 10th chapter, verse 10, the Bible said Jesus come that they may have life. Well, the first life that Jesus is talking about is eternal life. Uh, eternal life, meaning that when a person confesses Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior, believing in their heart that God is raised from the dead, that person shall be saved. Eternal life has been deposited into every person who have made Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. Then the Scripture said in St. John 10 and 10, not only does he come that you may have life, but that you may have life more abundantly. The word life in that other part of St. John 10 and 10 is called zoe, 
which we call the God kind of life. So in other words, Jesus has come that we may have what we call the God kind of life. And so people might be saying, well, how can I have the God kind of life? Or what is the God kind of life? The God kind of life is a life that is free from sickness and disease. It is a life that is free from poverty. Matter of fact, it is a life that's free from everything that's underneath the curse. Well, what is the curse? The curse is everything that happened as a result of Adam disobedient. The Bible talks about when Adam sinned, there was a law or a spiritual law that went into, into effect. It's called the law of sin and death. And everything after that law began to produce poverty and lack and suffering and sickness and disease. But the Bible talks about that when Jesus died and rose from the dead, there was a new law that came into effect. It was called the law of life in Christ Jesus. And then the Bible says in the book of Romans, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law and sin of death, the law of sin and death. In other words, the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set me free from that other law, that law of sin and death, that law that produces sickness, disease, poverty, and life, uh, sickness and disease, and everything goes against what I call the life of God. Now, what are you talking about here tonight? I want you to pay close attention. The Word of God is life. St. John, the sixth chapter, verse 63, said this, These words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus said the words he speak to you, they're not only spirit, but these words are life, or they are what I call alive. They are active powerful words that's coming out of the mouth of Jesus. So God's Word is the life of God. God's Word is the life of God. So what if I take God's Word, which is the life of God, and apply it to my flesh that may not be feeling well? Well, what's going to happen? The life of God will drive out every sickness, every disease, everything that's in your body. That's why he said in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, the first thing he says is this, let not the word of God depart. The word let means don't allow. You don't allow the word of God to depart out of your eyes. Why should not allow the word of God, Proverbs 4.21 says, don't allow the word of God to depart out of your eyes. Why? Verse 22 says, for they are life. Well, what is life? The word of God. Didn't we just say it in St. John 6, 63, that the Bible said that the words that Jesus speak, they are spirit and they are what? Life. And then Proverbs 4, 23, uh, 22 said, uh, for they are life to those who find them. So we see that the word of God will produce life. Not only will it produce life, but the Bible says, notice, life and health to your what? Flesh. All of us in here have a physical flesh body. That body goes through different things. Sometimes that body uh, is attacked by Satan with physical sickness and disease. And just like in the natural, if you will go to your doctor, he gives you a prescription, and the design of that prescription is to make your body feel well. Well, guess what? We go to Jesus who is the great physician, glory to God. He is writing a spiritual uh, prescription. And what is he saying? Don't allow my word to depart from your mouth. In other words, allow my word to be deposited into your life. It will cause healing to your flesh. So notice he said, don't let the word of God depart out of your eyes. Don't why? It's life. The word of God is medicine. Just like you take your natural medicine in your, uh, every day, take the Word of God every day. I, I, I tell individuals, you should be at least reading or listening or meditating on healing scriptures, if not every day, every other day. Why? You are providing life to your body. You are providing the life of God. 
Well, how are you going to get the life of God? The word of God. Remember, he says, let not the word depart. That lets me know Satan is trying to come and get the only thing that will keep you living. Hear what I'm about to say now. Once again, Satan is trying to steal the word, which is the only thing that's going to keep you alive, that's going to keep your body living, the word of God. Okay, let me give you a scripture. Matthew 4, verse 4 says like this, man shall not live, come on now, by what? Bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Notice that, I live by the word. Have you heard people say, man, I'm going to church to get what? Fed. What are they talking about? That word is feeding their spirit, but not only that word is feeding their spirit, it's bringing life, glory to God, to their mortal bodies. He said, man should not just live by bread alone, but by every word. My God. See, it's the word of God's going to keep you alive. It's the word of God that will give you at least 80 to 100 years on this earth. But you can't allow the word to depart out of your heart. You got to keep it in the midst of you. Why did he say, let not the word depart? Because there is an adversary. His name is Satan. And the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, he says, be sober, be alert for your adversary, the devil. He's walking around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He doesn't have to devour you. What is he trying to do? He's trying to get the word of God out of you. Why? Because the word of God is the only thing that's going to keep your body alive. The word of God is the only thing going to keep your finances alive. The word of God is the only thing going to keep your man, your, your mind alive. Glory to God. I, I'm telling I'm, I'm trying to come down here because I'm just sensing the anointing of God. When you get the word of God on the scene, it will provide the type of life that you need. He said, don't let it depart. I'm asking you today, when the last time you took your medicine? When the last time you allowed the medicine of God to feed your spirit and cause your, fel- your flesh to be healthy? That's what to, uh, to Proverbs 4.22 says. It will provide life. To those who find him, healing and help to your flesh. Now, if the Bible says it's going to provide healing and help to my flesh, well, it behooves all of us to make sure I have a consistent diet of the word of Almighty God. He said, don't let it depart. You need to be uh, reading that word. You need to have that word before your eyes. I literally, I believe literally, he said, don't let it depart from your eyes. That means you got to keep it before you. That means there'll be some time you're reading the Bible. You got to keep the word before you. See, read the scriptures. I, 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 I teach a healing school here uh, in the Georgia area, and, and I teach at the hospitals, and I teach uh, uh, here at the church, and I, I tell the, uh, uh, the people, the patients and the staff, doctors and so forth this. We got to keep the word of God going into people's lives. They consistently have to get in the word of God. It's providing life. When there is no life, there is death. Remember, life or what? Death. When you get the life of God, life will go ahead and, and, and drown out everything that's in your body trying to kill you. Think about it right now. Sickness and disease is trying to take us out of here. But if I'll get the life of God, the life of God will run out every sickness. It'll run out every infection out of your body. The life of God, the same spirit of life that, rose, that raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible said the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken Make alive your mortal body. Do you realize you have the Spirit of God that's on the inside of you? The same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead. The power of God in your body. And he will make alive everything that's trying to kill you. My God, glory to God. I'll say this. Go ahead and shout somebody. Shout. I'm telling you, the life of God is so powerful. The Word of God brings life to you. You might be watching me and things are going on in your body. You got to speak life. Well, how do I get life? The word. So I can't let Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 depart from my eye. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 said, surely he bore my griefs and carried my sorrows. Yet we esteem him smitten, stricken by God. Verse 5 said, but he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. 
the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. See, I can't let Isaiah 53, 4, and 5 get away from my eye. See, when the enemy's attacking you, he's trying to get you to look away from Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. He's trying to get you to focus on something else that, instead of the Word of God. The Bible said, don't let it depart. When you're, the enemy is attacking your body, remember, you got to own purpose and said, I'm going to focus on the Word. Matthew 8, 17 uh, said, uh, so that the scripture might be fulfilled, he himself took my sickness and my disease. Matthew was quoting what Isaiah said in, 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 in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. He himself took my sickness. He took my disease. Don't let Matthew 8, 17 leave your eyes. 1 Peter 2, 24 said, he bore my sins in his body on that cross, and by his stripes we were healed. That's your medicine. You got to keep taking 1 Peter 2, 24, Matthew 8, 17, Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. You got to take it when? Every day. Somebody said, well, preacher, how long did I got to keep taking? Until, I, until the life of God drives out everything that's in your body that's not right. Until the life of God heals every organ, every tissue, every blood cell. Take your medicine of the word of almighty God. That's a scripture that talks about in the Bible where well, there was a woman who had an issue of blood. You know the Bible talks about she had an issue of blood. Uh, back during those days, if, if, if women considered had the issue of blood and, and, and those things did not stop, we, the society considered them as unclean. So during those time of monthly things of what was going on, they had to stay in so they considered unclean. Well, the Bible talks about that her was incurable. The blood never stopped. It never dried up. And so all of a sudden, the Bible says she went to the doctors. Notice, she went to the doctor. She went to the physician, and she spent everything that she had. They, they, they try to stop her. They, they try to give her the medicine, but it didn't work. But the Bible says she heard about a man called Jesus. Come on now. Notice here. Now, let me say this. The Bible says in the book of John 1 and 1, he says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld this glory, the glory of the Son of God. So the Bible says she heard about Jesus, or she heard about the Word. And the Bible said when she heard about the Word, she got up and says, I need to go find out about this man called Jesus. The Bible says she pressed her way through the crowd. We know the story. The Bible says she pressed, so therefore she touched the hem of his garment. When she touched the hem of his garment, virtue came up out of his body. My God, came into her body. What was that? The very life of God. Notice, Jesus is the Word. So think about it like that. She put took, put took of the Word of God. She invested in the Word of God. She saw the Word of God. She didn't get her eyes off of Jesus, who is the Word of Almighty God. When she began to have faith in the Word of God, what did the Word do? The Word healed her body. Who is the Word? Jesus. Who is the Word? Jesus. The Word of God healed her body. That's what you got to do. You got to have faith in the God's Word. It's medicine. Take it every day. And one thing about the Word of God, I was teaching this at, at, at a later place today. I, though you will never get OD on the Word of God. Glory to God. My God, you can take as much medicine as you want to. Glory to God. I'm telling you, man, you'll be walking in the life of God. My God, they thought you was hurting. You'd be like, my God, Jesus and healed my body. I'm telling you, you'll be radiating with the life of God. You will be filled with God's life on the inside of you. The Word does that. Did not the Bible says in Hebrews 4, verse 12, that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword cut between the, the, the joints and the marrow of the son of a man's heart? The Bible says it's energizing. The word of God is active. Do you realize God's word is active? It is powerful. Do you not see why the devil fights you so much? Not to get the word of God into your system. But if you'll get the word of God containing healing, my God, it'll drive everything out. It'll drive the cancer out. It'll drive the sickness out. It'll drive the tumor out. It, it, it'll drive high blood pressure. It'll get it out. It'll cause it to be normal. It'll cause your sugar to be normal. It'll cause your cholesterol to be normal. Glory to God. I'm telling you, the Word of God is the answer to 
our body. That's why he says in Proverbs 4.21, do not let them out of your sight. He said, keep them in the midst of your heart. Now, notice this. We see the word heart, H-E-A-R-T. Now, I've talked this before on a previous broadcast, but I sense the need to bring it back up. There are three entrances to a man's heart. Now, the Bible talks about in Proverbs 4, we're going to see here, he said, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. The word guard, G-U-A-R-D, implies a, 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 like a security officer who will protect something that is valuable. If you've ever gone into any local bank or any national bank, most of them have security cameras. A lot of them have security guards. The guards are there to prevent any type of robbery uh, of the valuable commodity or assets that's in that bank, which is the money. And so that guard is armed to do whatever he or she needs to do to protect that valuable asset. Well, let me tell you something. Your heart is the most valuable asset in your life, and the Bible tells you to guard it. Why did he tell you to guard it? He said, because out of your heart will produce the type of life that you want. And let me tell you something. If you don't, produce, if you don't protect your heart, you're going to get the type of life based upon the seeds that were sown into your heart. Your heart is not, I'm not talking about your organ that's pumping blood right now. I am talking about your born-again spirit that will recreate the type of life that God wants you to have. There's three entrances to a man's heart. It's ear gate, his eye gate, and his mouth gate. There's three entrances. His eye gate, his ear gate, and his mouth gate. These are three entrances to a man's heart. So a person said, well, man of God, how do I take the word of God? How do I take it? There's three ways it has to get in your heart. It has to bypass your mind and get into your heart. Well, the first thing is, he said, your eyesight. First thing he said, don't let the word depart on your eyesight. You got to keep it before your eyesight. You got to keep it on your mind. You got to physically look at it and read the scripture. Don't let it depart. Even when you have to get up and go somewhere, keep it on your mind. See, instead of your eyes on something else, it needs to be on the Word. See, most of us sometimes, when we got physical sickness and things and we done heard a bad report, we keeping our eyes on what the paper said about this diagnosis. So we keeping our eyes on, 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 on things that are not according to the Word of God. Don't keep your eyes on things that are not the Word. Keep your eyes on the Scripture. What did the Word say? Because the eye gate is an interest to get to your heart. Second, the ear gate. What are you listening to? You got to hear the Word of God. The Bible talks about Romans 10, verse 17. He said that faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing comes by what? The Word of Almighty God. So faith comes by what you hear. Well, you can't hear, keep hearing bad reports. I know what the doctor said. I know they said that you got this going on in your life. Okay, we understand that. But let's go hear the Word of God now. See, you got to believe whose report you're going to believe. Are you going to believe the report of the doctor or are you going to report of God? Well, people say, well, you know, well, the doctor showed me on the x-ray. Let, let me tell you this. I, I share this a lot with individuals. There is a difference between a fact versus the truth. The fact may be that they diagnose you with high blood pressure. But the truth of God's word says you're healed. So I'm not saying that you don't have the symptoms of the high blood pressure. But according to the word of God, you could deny its right to stay in your body because Jesus died on the cross for high blood pressure. Glory to God. So in other words, instead of me focusing on what they diagnosed me with, I'm going to focus on what the Word says. So all of a sudden, guess what you're doing? You're hearing the Word of God concerning, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm here. You keep hearing it. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing comes by what? The Word of God. You have to make it your business to hear the Word on healing. You can't have faith for healing if you don't listen to messages on healing. That's why I tell individuals, it's how you build your house. 
if you want to build your house strong in healing, you're going to have to hear the word of God on healing. You, don't, you can't wait until you get hit in your body. Glory to God. You got to build your house right now on the healing power of God, on the word of God, so that when enemy tries to attack your body, you can say, no, no, devil. Matthew 8, 17 say, he himself took my sickness and took my disease. Glory to God. See, Matthew 8, 17 said that. You guess what? You heard it, you keep hearing it over and over and over. See, I, I try to listen to the word of God uh, on healing, at least if not every day, every other day. I got to get the healing message into me. Why? First of all, it's healing every part of my body. Glory to God. So then when I come on the broadcast and I'm praying for you, I got faith. Why? Because I've been stirred up in the word of God. I've been feeding on the word of God. And now what you get into, glory to God, is the overflow of what I've been believing God for. Why? The word of God works. I tell you, you won't change until you get the Word of God in you. The third thing we talked about, there's three entrances to a man's heart. We said the eye gate, the ear gate, number three, the mouth. What are, what are you saying? What, what are you allowing to come out of your mouth? Or are you saying, well, you know, this thing going to kill me. Well, you never know. I'm never going to be anything. I get sicker by the day. The old I get looks like something always breaking down. See, the devil is a lie. See, let me tell you something. Satan don't have authorization to come into your life until you open up your mouth and begin to decree and side against the word of God. You got to side with God's word, not against the word of God. When you open up your mouth, if the enemy is attacking your body and there's physical pain going on in your body, you got to open up your mouth and say, Satan, I break every lying symptom, every false symptom that's trying to attack my body. I believe by the stripes of Jesus, I am completely healed. Open up your mouth and say the word. Did not the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it. See, listen here. You are what you're speaking. What are you speaking? You got to speak the word of God. As you speak the word of God, it gets into your heart. When it gets into your heart, it comes back out with power. Speak what the Word says. Stop speaking. You're getting worse than worse. No, I say, you know what? I'm getting better and better. I, I, I told one of my elders uh, recently, I said, you got to start saying, the older you get, the more healthy you are. Stop saying the older you get, everything breaking down in your body. Stop, you know, going outside and you never went to a department store and parked your car and went to the store and then came out on the other side and forgot where you park at. And then you say, oh, God, I must be losing my mind. Stop saying that. Stop saying the memory of the just is blessed. Glory to God. Say my memory is blessed and just stand there until God bring it back to you. Remember where you parked your car at. Glory to God. See, you got to speak in line with the word of God. God is looking for people that's going to take the medicine. I'm asking you today as we close, are you going to take the medicine of God today? Are you going to take God's medicine? It's right here looking at you, the medicine of God, the Word of God. I'm telling you, as you take the Word of God, it'll drive all the sickness out of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are watching us by broadcast, those that are listening on the radio through shortwave or radio stations, God, in the foreign countries. Father, I come against every attack, every assignment right now against their bodies. I declare, according to the word of God, that by the strikes of Jesus, they are healed. Father, help your people to take the word of God on a consistent basis. In Jesus' name, I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Well, we love you so much. Amen. My time is already up. I'm telling you, you get to teach in the Word of God. I'm telling you, time just flies by. But I just want to encourage you. We love you so much. If you get the opportunity, we do have a website out there. We call it www clintonpotters.org. The announcer will put the information on the screen. Love for you to go to our website. We do have an email address called clintonpottersministries at gmail.com. Send us a testimony. Let us know how the Word of God is impacting your life. And while you're on the website, amen, there's a lot of information about partnership. Love for you to be a partner. We call it CPM Partner. There is no gift too small, definitely no gift too big, amen. If the Lord should lead you, amen, to partner with us, amen, we'll love to have your support. Help me to bring this gospel of healing to the world, to the nations of this world, to let people know that Jesus is still in the healing business. We love you so much. 
And remember, God wants you well.